Good morning, pregame crew. This is Char Gal Lori. It is Monday, January 24th. Welcome to the bloodbath. In all seriousness, I know that this is a frightful environment for a lot of traders, especially if you have not traded in this bearish of an environment. It can be scary. The most important thing is to just do the risk management. Sit on your hands, observe. If you must trade, trade one share, just one share, that's all. Just get used to this environment. In order to do that, you have to preserve your capital because you won't be around tomorrow to trade if you don't have capital. So it is January 24th, 8.23 a.m. Eastern, 6.23 a.m. Mountain. You have arrived at the pregame show and we're just gonna break things down play by play, chart by chart, time frame by time frame. I go over the indices, crypto commodities, movers and shakers of the day, and I answer your questions as I can the, to the best of my ability. Matter of fact, let me pop this chat out. Flow's a little different this morning, so I'm trying to acclimate. Hi, good morning, John, Topher, Lisa, Greg, Scott, Veronica, Blue Dog, Roger, Amira, Asia, Matthew, Jason, Chuck. Thanks, Chuck. Train Man, Adam, Long P, Mary, good morning. Sure, I can look at NVAX real quick before I get started with the indices. Daily RSI is 25. Weekly RSI not oversold. That's so important when you have so much runway left on charts. And runway, what I mean is this area here where we're not oversold on the weekly. It can still drop farther. Actually, it's in my notes today. I will show you RSI is not as important in a fear environment. So yes, it's beat up, but it is not the be all end all. The market needs to bounce, period. 7659 is that key support. And we're coming in hot. We're coming in hot to 76.59. Monthly has lost its uptrend. So now are we trying to save the quarter trend? Yep, we're looking for a quarterly higher low. And weekly, would, if weekly were oversold, I'd feel more comfortable that quarterly higher low will be set. Hey, Tammy, good morning. Hey, John. <laughs> the beatings will continue until morale improves. What a great line, so true. Okay, yep, we need we need VIX to sit down. Let's look at Marvel. Is that Marvel? I think this is Marvel, not Marvel, right? I don't know. What do I know? We're looking for a weekly high or low compared to 69.30. Daily RSI is not oversold and we're filling that gap. We have a gap at 72.16. We filled that Friday by well within four pennies of it, but we're definitely below that now. Four hour RSI is not oversold. Look at this. Coin did this as well. We went over this example last week with Coin. Look at this RSI. They're masterfully walking the dog. They're doing that. What is that uh, yo-yo trick where they walk the dog and they're just slowing down this RSI and keeping it contained. Very, very methodical selling on Marvell. It is in the semiconductor space, and I saw a little gleaming hope of green on TSM this morning. I have it on my list for semiconductors. There's something going on in Taiwan. I'm not sure, and I'm not going to proclaim to know, but we are looking for a daily high or low on TSM. So if TSM could get this bounce going, it could help names like Marvell. Can you do HUT? Yes. Good morning, Bobo. Hey, night truck. Yep, NQ is definitely looking crazy, getting really beat up. Things don't have to bounce. We have been in a world, in a bullish market, where buying dips has served so many people for so long, and the environment has changed, the context has changed, and we have, we have to have to recognize that. So HUT is related to blockchain. We are looking for a monthly higher low compared to 315. Daily RSI is oversold, but, oh, that's a big gap down open. Wow. We may come in hot at 315. This would be a name I'd be interested in possibly playing this oversold bounce, but crypto has to find a bottom. The market has to find a bottom, and I don't want to get overly aggressive getting long anywhere. And I also don't want to get aggressive going short here. 
you would be shorting in the hole if you would short here on NASDAQ, on HUT. You're shorting in the hole. There's not a lot of meat left on the bone. So let, let the market find a bottom. You don't have, we don't give out trophies or Oscars for nailing the bottom. So we don't have to be in a hurry to buy all this. John, you typed G mom. So I, I'm assuming you meant good morning, but I'll take G mom as well. I think that's a cool name. I like Netflix. It's on my list this morning. I am somewhat embarrassed to tell y'all all I have is longs for you today. All I have is long ideas because we can't short in the hole. You can't short in the hole. You just need these small bounces and then you can short. So I'm looking in a very particular direction this morning. Uh, so just a heads up on that. You like XRP. What's going on with XRP? Is it getting thrown away like everything else? Looking for a monthly high or low on XRP compared to 5090. Look at this, the hourly is not oversold. This is again another masterful way. Look at this head and shoulders on RSI beginning to form. It hasn't formed, but they have just cooled off RSI with these little bounces. That's not good for crypto because then you could just keep rolling over. Cool it off, roll over. Cool it off, roll over. <laughs> you miss those days. What do I think of ARC? I love ARC, actually. I would like to buy ARC. I talked about it last week. I did a flip. I didn't swing it because it the bulls gave me no reason to swing. But I like ARC to the long side. I, I'm a Kathy Woods fan. I will admit it. Daily RSI is oversold. Weekly RSI is oversold. I like it. We just need to find a bottom, obviously. 60, 70, 60, 61 is the next support. So we don't have to run into this burning building and try to save the day. Let's just let it burn on down and then we can rebuild. All right. We're here. It is 829. I'm going to go ahead and get started with the indices. I'm Chark Al Lori. You are at the pregame show. And what I do is I go over indices, crypto, commodities, movers, and shakers of the day. You can follow me on Twitter at Chark Al Lori. You could hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it on the YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notify button. Let's get started with the indices. I keep uh, marking support and having to delete it because we just keep going through whatever level I mark. The next support is 4317 and then 4260. In this monthly uptrend, it is key that we hold 4260. 4260. Let me write it. 4260. Sometimes when I write it like this, I have a, a my memory. I can when I see things, I have a photographic memory of sorts, and I'm like, okay, that's the number 4260. So it helps me to kind of rewrite it. If you're interested in my chart setup, it's on the screen now. I will delete that to save real estate. Not that I need the real estate because I have a lot up here above price. So eight EMA just continues to shove down price and look at the separation. See the separation between the eight and 21 EMA. That's when it's really, really ramping up speed. The slope of the EMA tells us how fast the bears are driving the truck. And obviously the bears are definitely in the driver's seat. They're driving the truck and they're driving it really, really fast. So the faster to the downside, the better the bounce typically, but let's go look at the daily. We're oversold 24 and on the weekly, we still have runway left. They still have space to drive this down. So here are my notes for today. So RSI is not as important in a fear environment. So we have volatilities really, really spiking. This is my key for the week. The weekly lower high is super important with the VIX in order for the market to get any bounce or sustained bounce. Crypto acceleration to the downside is confirming this risk off mentality. We have FOMC this Wednesday. We have Microsoft, Tesla, Apple earnings this week. The bounces are not as important as trend changes. So I, I guess I should have put this here. Gotta stay organized. 
So the events happening this week are FOMC, and then we got really, really, really important earnings this week. I know if I was a bear, I would want to cover before Elon Musk releases earnings. That's just me. So I am looking for bounces in these names that have earnings this week, especially those that are daily oversold. You don't have a lot of meat left on the bone. Why would you hold short? That, that would be tough for me to do, and maybe it will pay off. But that would be really tough. So I'm looking for balances because of these key earnings. And also Jerome is going to talk Wednesday. We've got the FOMC. Anything can happen. I can't think of a week where the stakes have been this high. So we have, oh, sorry, water. It's really, really important week. And the most important thing is that you and I are sitting here Friday morning and we still have our capital. Risk management, I, I just can't scream enough how important this is, risk management. So the bounces are great, but we have seen bounce after bounce after bounce, and then it just rolls over, bounce and roll over. We need trend changes. And if you're not a member of TCG, you're probably saying, what is she talking about? Trend changes, we want higher highs, higher lows. Do You see these bounces? Lower high, roll over, lower high, roll over. We need trend changes. So it's super, super important when we bounce, how we pull back. So it's it's not, we will bounce, surely we will bounce, but how we pull back is everything. We just can't keep giving up every single piece of the bounce. Good morning, hey MG, hey Wave, thanks for being here. All right, so ES levels. Resistance 442750, 4487, and then what's that number? 4260, super, super, super important. So the next support is 431725, and then below that, 4260. Of the top, our top four, NASDAQ is getting beat up the most. So on NASDAQ, we have, let's see, we have lost this monthly support of 14367. And as soon as we lost that level, we start accelerating to the downside. So NASDAQ has lost the monthly higher low and ES has not. Let me say it again. NASDAQ has lost the monthly higher low and ES has not. RTY is in a world, world of hurt because it's a risk off environment. People throw away those small caps. I'd much rather throw away AMC than Apple, so that's what's happening. We have these big gaps between the EMAs. It's just showing this acceleration to the downside. So did I give you a NASDAQ level? I don't think I gave you a level. Let me go back. So the next level would be these prior highs, 14064. They could serve as support, so keep those on your chart if you're trading NASDAQ. Hourly RSI is oversold. You see these bounces? They just cool off RSI and then they can bounce and do it again and do it again. Weekly RSI is not oversold. We have runway left. Resistance is up at 1457475, 14582. RTY, resistance 2007, 2044. Your next support is down at. Nineteen twenty. Nineteen twenty is your next support on RTY. We talked about this last week that we were getting into an area where IWM had gone up so fast that it wipes out the, the order book. When you move up super, super fast, you wipe out the order book. So you come down into that area again, it can accelerate to the downside because that order book was wiped out. I hope I'm making sense in how I'm explaining this. So super important, RTY needs to find a bottom, Dow, we just broke that 34,000 psychological level. Your next support is down at, this may be a double bottom if we were to hold this, but it doesn't show any signs of holding. Next support, 33383, 3383, three. yeah, that's a lot of threes. Resistance, 34410 and 34782. Dan mentioned this morning Lockheed Martin because there's some military stuff at risk. So I guess I should have put that on my notes. Let's see. There's some military stuff going on and we have the European markets just really got hit hard, which is not a good omen for the markets over here, military unrest, let's call it unrest. So you look at names like Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, that type of thing, okay? Now, the most important chart of the day for me, VIX, super important chart. 
So y'all remember this, we were talking about it over here, we had this big pullback, we got a weekly higher high, weekly higher low, and now we're testing that weekly re resistance again. We are in a weekly uptrend on VIX. That's unheard of, it hardly ever happens. So what I'm looking for, for this market bounce to get any type of legs under it versus just dead cat bounces, is we need this weekly level 3532 to hold. It is super, super important for that 3532 to hold on VIX. I wanted to show you something else too, real quick. Ichimoku, I don't talk about it a lot. Ichimoku is a leading indicator. It's not a lagging. All our moving averages, all of them are lagging. It just tells you what's happened in the past. This is a Japanese uh, indicator and it is a leading indicator. It gives you a glimpse as to what could happen in the future. And so right now the weekly chart is still in an uptrend on ES. Still, it's looking up. But let's look at it on the hourly. On the hourly, do you see this? Ichimoku, so when we would bounce, you would expect for you to reject at the Ichimoku cloud. So we got to reject, come under it, and then get back up through it. I'm probably not explaining this well, but the Ichimoku can act as support or resistance. If you're coming up from it from below, it can serve as resistance. If you're coming up from the top, it can serve as support. So hourly looks still very ominous and four hour. And the daily, this is something I've pointed out on this weekend swing report video, is the Ichimoku cloud is pointing down on the daily. That has not happened since here, COVID 2020. That has not happened since right here. It went sideways red, sideways red, but we have yet to see an Ichimoku cloud pointing down. It just showed on the daily now, on the weekly, it doesn't look as ominous, but on the daily, it looks pretty, pretty sad. It's definitely sad. So the most important chart is what? VIX, most important chart for me. Hourly RSI is getting overbought, four hour overbought, and daily is getting overbought. So what was our RSI here? Around 78 and we're at 74 now, 75, 75. So we're getting into an area where it historically rejects on daily RSI and we're coming in hot to this resistance of 3532. Super, 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 super important. Let me get this Ichimoku cloud off. All right, Bitcoin. Bitcoin gave us clues, has been giving us clues for a while. It would bounce ahead of the market. So if we can get a bounce going on Bitcoin, it would make me feel a little more comfortable in playing an oversold bounce. And I'd probably look to play the oversold bounce in NASDAQ because we have the big NASDAQ generals having earnings this week. So. I would look to play NASDAQ to the long side if I got any clue from crypto that we were going to get a bounce. So we're trying to set this 15 minute high. Nope, we broke it. We didn't set a 15 minute higher low. My bad. Lower low. I couldn't see it with all my graffiti. 32933 is your new support resistance 34,200. 35579. Ethereum getting beat up. Support 2172. We're right down there. Hourly RSI is just now getting oversold because we had that big bounce. Cooled things off. Weekly RSI is not oversold. 1718 is the level. Next support actually is 2041 prior resistance. And then the next support below that would be 1718. Gold. Gold looks good. Gold is finally getting its, its, sh its stuff together. Let's say it's stuff. Potential daily bull flag resistance, 1848, then 1879 support, 1828, then 1804. And because of how good gold looks on the daily, look at the squeeze here. I have GDX on our list of miners. Dan pointed out this morning, it was one of the few names that's holding Friday's low. So bottom fish at 3148 makes sense. And if you are a ninja, you could use a three times ETF like Nugget. If you are not a ninja, trading LABU and LABD, that's just gonna make you lose money faster. You know, drink coffee, do stupid stuff faster. Trade three times ETFs and do stupid stuff faster. If you are an inconsistently profitable trader, stay away from those three times ETFs. There's plenty of time for that in your trading future. But if you are a ninja and you're very experienced and consistently profitable, you may wanna trade this with NUGT. And this thing has a history of breaking by a few pennies and then bouncing. So I would use 31.39 prior resistance as my support. Going back to commodities, oil pulling back pretty hard. 
We talked about this ad nauseum, and I was looking at this earlier. I saw this diamond bearish reversal pattern. This does not bode well for oil. This pattern, even though oil has kept the market propped up for a very long time, uh, or XLE and XLF have, but it looks like it's finally rolling over. We would look for a lower high on any bounce compared to 8609. Your next support, 8278. Nat gas. Nat gas can't hold gains whatsoever. Resistance 4044, then 4385. Support is 3876, 3865, and then 3781. Okay. Oh, okay, Amira Asia, that's good to know. Yeah, think or swim is just not that great with short, having shorts available. So, here, so here's some of my queen of the mountain setups, and I will say, I am not super confident in calling one of these the queen of the mountain. Like, this is the one I'm going with. I don't have that kind of confidence this morning because all of my setups are to the long side, and I can't just jump in long when the market is this weak. So, affirm. We're looking for a monthly higher low, of course, with market cooperation. It got an upgrade and the daily RSI is oversold. So typically we look for monthly higher lows when the daily RSI is oversold and we're at 22. We're coming into a key support of 5602 and then 5406. A firm got sold off last Thursday. Let's go look at it. Got sold off Thursday with the uh, Peton news. So when Peloton leak, whether it's right, true or not, that uh, they're going to stop producing treads and bikes because they have too much inventory. And that pulled down Lulu, uh, Planet Fitness. It pulled down everybody, Nautilus, Peloton. So it was totally unrelated to a firm and it got hit. So I think this is a buying opportunity on a firm. But again, I need the market to cooperate. I can't go blindly buy it. GDX, I like a lot. I would say that's probably queen of the mountain. Mara, we're scouting a monthly higher low and daily is oversold. So we're at that monthly 50 RSI, which is pretty important, but we need crypto to bounce or this is a useless, useless setup. So we're coming in hot to support of 1832. Hourly RSI oversold, four hour oversold, daily oversold, weekly still has some runway left. Netflix. Netflix is one of the few names that's holding Friday's low for now, 3799. So I would look to dip by Netflix. I would say all the way to 379, let's say 60. So just give it a little wiggle, wiggle room on the pullback. And that's if the market's bouncing. If the market's not bouncing, all of these ideas are garbage, absolute garbage. Peloton is holding Friday's low. So Peloton, that news got leaked by an employee via CNBC. It was not a news release. And they got hammered and then Thursday night, the CEO came out and said, that's not true. And then we had a relief bounce on Friday. So we're, we're defining a range here. I would say a higher low compared to 2434. Looking for the hourly higher low on Peloton makes sense. QDEL. And I want to show you how I did this real quick. So on Finviz, I used a screener earlier and I was just looking up fundamentals. Yes, I'm saying the F word. And I was looking for PE, you know, uh, less than 15. I was looking for EPS growth, the highest there is in the last five years. Sorry, doing this real quickly. Oh, come on. So anyway, obviously I'm not doing this right. There we go. And I sorted it by price. So I'm looking for companies that are su super, super, fundamentally strong, lots of sales growth. And I went and started looking at all of these names. And Winnebago was a name I liked. I think I have it on my list. And Qdell. Did I keep Winnebago on the list? Yeah. So Qdell. So it made me go look at these charts. I'm like, okay, this company is strong, fundamentally strong and undervalued PE wise. So 103.31. Oh, it's breaking it. Dang it. I thought this was a good dip by opportunity against on the monthly against 103.31. So if we can get back up and over 103.31 before open, this could be a good monthly higher low bottom fish attempt. SoFi had wonderful news last, whatever, last week about they're getting recognized as a bank or something. 
So they had this huge push up, ran into the daily 50 MA and rejected. They have a gap down here at 1311. So from the gap, the uh, news got released after hours. So it gapped up and it's pulling back and giving back all of those gains. This was pretty incredible news. So I'm considering this a back burner because we moved up so high. We had such a strong push and this will be the first hourly oversold after that news push. So this daily gap is getting filled. So I like a bottom fish on SoFi compared to 1286. TSM. All right, TSM, I talked about earlier, semiconductor news. Some, something is news related, I'm not sure. I've gone over this chart ad nauseum with y'all. Y'all know I like this weekly squeeze. We're coming back to the 50 RSI support. We had a weekly inside bar last week. So I'm looking for a bottom fish opportunity against 123.21. Winnebago, you saw my logic there that I was just looking at it because it fundamentally sound company for bottom fish against 61.13. We're breaking below that right now. If we could get back up and over it before the market opens, it, we actually broke it Friday by pennies. So I'm still considering this a monthly double bottom, bottom fish opportunity. And finally, XLF. XLF is looking for a weekly higher low. I know that sounds crazy. You're like, what? We're in a weekly, we're looking for a weekly higher low, yeah. And we have a gap fill down here. We have a gap at 37.86. We're filling that in pre-market and not all gaps have to be filled. And if you go back and look at this chart, there's plenty of gaps down here that have not been filled. We may go back and fill them all, who knows? But a gap fill is typically a magnet and I like a bottom fish opportunity against 37.21 looking for that weekly higher low with four hour oversold on XLF. All right, DWAC, Halliburton had earnings this morning. Let's see. DWAC, first hourly oversold after a big push up last week. So I would say it's getting close to bottom fish, hourly uh, double bottom. You could look to bottom fish it against 66.85. Halliburton had earnings. I don't like the XLE chart and I definitely don't like the oil chart. So that, not this how. There's two hows. There we go. So they're getting a bearish reaction to earnings. We are looking for a daily higher low. There's a gap to be aware of right there at 2405. Hourly is not even oversold yet. I would not be bought. I would look to short any bounce on how. XLF I covered. Okay. All right. Can uh, someone block S-A-H-I-N? I can't, I'm not logged in. Can someone please block S-A-H-I-N? All right, that is it for me. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, let me see if there's anything else I wanna go over. You're welcome, Blue Dog. You are so very welcome. All right, that's it for me. I'm going to wrap it up. Use stop losses. Charts can go down a lot farther than you think. Don't depend on RSI as much because the environment is different right now. We are not in a, a buy the dip environment. We are in sell the rip. So bounces, you're gonna have over eager bears who didn't get positioned well like me. And I'm looking to short bounces. So I'm not looking all along today. If I had to say what direction I'm looking today, Overall, I would say I'm looking for, a, uh, obvious, a flush at open. Then I would look for a dead cat bounce, and I would expect that bounce to only be dead cat to, to cool off those RSI, and then back down she goes. There is no reason yet for bears to cover, except for fear of positive earnings reactions and FOMC. And that doesn't happen today, so there's really no reason for them to cover. So VIX chart, most important chart out there, and... That's it for me. TCGers, you're going to see me in the room.
Yeah, hit the like button.